Hey, and thank you for this great opportunity to present my research here today. The assessment of pelvic floor and abdominal muscles in the postpartum period, a reliability study. My name is Sabine Westing and I'm a PhD student at the University of Gothenburg. The study was funded by Research and Development Primary Healthcare and the local Research and Development Council Gothenburg and Söda Bohuslän, Sweden. We see in primary care that more and more women are requiring a muscular assessment after pregnancy. They want to know if their pelvic floor is recovering and they want to know if the gap between the abdominal muscles, also known as diastasis rectally abdominis, is growing together again. However, we don't have valid and reliable method for these kind of assessments in the postpartum care. So the aim of the study was to evaluate the reliability of clinically applicable methods for the assessment of pelvic floor muscles and diastasis recti abdominis three months after pregnancy. So how did we do? We recruited 222 women via antenatal centers and social media in Gothenburg. The participants who were booked at one of three rehabilitation centers in the region of Westerjötaland within three months after pregnancy. And the assessments were performed of six physiotherapists two at each rehabilitation center. We assessed the pelvic floor muscles by observation and vaginal palpation. The functions we assessed were involuntary contraction, maximal voluntary contraction, pelvic floor muscle endurance, and voluntary relaxation. We measured the width of the diastasis recti abdominis at three points, above, at, and below the umbilicus. We palpated the depth of the limb nerva. You know, this is a tendon between the two bellies of the rectus abdominis. And we observed the bulging of the linear alba in a sit-up movement. And here are our results. Two of the assessments showed slight to fair reliability, this was involuntary contraction by observation and involuntary relaxation by palpation. Then we had a lot of assessments showing moderate reliability. It was this and this and also pelvic floor muscle endurance by palpation. Also the assessment of linear alba depth by palpation showed a moderate reliability and the linear alba bulging in a sit-up movement. And then we had two assessments showing substantial or good reliability. It was maximal voluntary contraction by vaginal palpation and the measurement of the width with a caliper. So what is our take home message? We showed that maximal voluntary contraction by vaginal palpation had substantial reliability and that the measurement of the width by caliper had a good reliability. And these are just different words because of different statistical values. Then we had a lot of assessments showing moderate reliability and two showing fair or slight reliability. So they need further investigation. So now our next steps. We really need to know which of these values are clinically relevant for postpartum women. We need to know which are indicating recovery in the pelvic floor and diastasis recti abdomini and which are related to problems like urinary incontinence or other pelvic floor disorders. We also need to know which advice we should give to postpartum women based on the results of these assessments, for example, regarding exercising. These will be the next steps of my thesis. Thank you very much for listening. Don't hesitate to ask or comment to my mail sabine.vesting at